Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves going again with the second half of what we're up to. The idea is we've been going through and using our list map to kind of flex something like the twisting value in a single input, either returning a single or many values, hopefully writing an Excel file, although I'm still having trouble, kind of with the Excel on my machine, but we'll debug that at some point outside of class. Right as we were leaving for the break, Jordan asked a very interesting and good question about the whole issue of how we're writing out this file, this uh, header to the file, and could we do that in a more effective way? And there actually is a way that I often use. The idea is that really we do know all these different values. We shouldn't have to retype in building height, growth, surface area, growth volume because we typed them in somewhere else. So the idea is if you really want to make your function very kind of generic and ger very generalizable, you could go through and abstract it a little bit like this. If you allow, uh, basically, the inputs to that function to include some different text strings, which might be the different reporting parameters that you want to go through and pull out, you can feed them in externally, this is text strings, and then within that function, go through and just take them as inputs. So rather than typing in explicitly as these code blocks, just take them as inputs. And then get the parameters based on those strings. Okay. That gives you the ability to change the purporting parameter that you're choosing like externally. So you don't really need to change anything about the function. At some point, this function just became very genetic. It's generic. It's basically take any model element and given any input, okay, report up to three different values out of it. Okay, so that sort of becomes a very kind of good general purpose function. It doesn't really need to have much intelligence at all. This little thing about putting the little uh, parameter in there to do the ratio, that's a little bit kind of specific. We might find a way to generalize that. But by doing that, over here, you can even say that as opposed to putting those explicitly as a big list as a code block, I can take those individual values, just make a list out of them, and use that as my header row. So a lot of ways of going through and doing that. So feel free to kind of try and abstract it as much as you can. As you pull that out, you're really getting sort of a very good general purpose function that's going to let you do a lot of different things. And this is really the basis for really where we're going to keep going like with this. The second example, actually I'm just going to keep on building it on this example. Would you want me to save this up to the file server so you can pull this on down? Okay, let's do that so you can have it because we're doing two input values. It's actually just sort of a very small extension to this. But let me go through and let me save this as. I'll put it out here and we'll basically say this is going to be, oh, it's going to be basically, I'll call it 3A twisting tower after the break. <coughs> So let me put that up on the Canvas drive so that you can have that too. Upload. Where'd it go? Twisting tower after the break. Go ahead and, oops. I should, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bundle up the whole example because what's gonna happen is you actually want my new custom node too. So let me get that one there. Let me compress that for you. Hang on here. I'll do it that one. Ignore this one for right now, because I just realized that we actually need to give you the new custom node too. So upload. If you go for, Come on. Come on. There we go. 
So go ahead and pull down 15.1 again using all this map to flex the twisting tower. If you want to kind of catch back up, if you want to, you can just go to 15.2. It's very similar, but since we've been working on this one and there's some interesting enhancements, I think I'll just keep on working with this one as a demonstrated next point. So the idea is, the next thing we would like to test, though, in terms of our ability to flex different things and kind of get different values out is, let's see if I can find uh, my mind map, the whole notion of basically bringing in pairs of inputs. And we can do this, it's pretty much the same sort of operation, whether it's going to return a single evaluation, or many evaluation values, or writing to Excel files, it doesn't matter. It's all on the front end in terms of how we pass in kind of values to go through and be flexible testing. So let's kind of think about this in terms of what we can do in terms of thinking about pairs. Because as I'm considering my tower over here, changing the height has actually been sort of one thing that's sort of interesting. What if I also start changing the twist of the tower too? So the idea is what I would like to do is go through and say, great, I'm going to have some different variation in the height of the tower, maybe something in the twist of the tower. For the triangular tower over here, we can do a lot of different things. We can sort of change the height, we can change the twist, we can change the top or bottom. Uh, over here, we do the same thing, the top or bottom, the height or width. We can do all these different things in terms of changing things. But let's just try changing the two things first. You can see if we really started flexing this and tried to think about all the different possible configurations, and we really have, oh, like five different or six different variables here. We can really play a lot of different, uh, with a lot of different combinations to sort of exhaustively think about all the different possibilities of what might potentially be on the site. So we'll just go with two right now, but you can imagine as we start going to three and four, this starts to get to be very uh, big as a space goes. So here's the idea. I still have this fabulous little function over here that says test value. And what I really want to do is now just start passing in test values. And here's what I have in mind. For my building height, I have this nice kind of combination of going from 100 to 300. Okay, That's kind of doing pretty good there. Let's just kind of put them over here. <coughs> Even maybe for this one, let me go just a little bit less. I'm going to say to 200 because I'm going to start having a lot of values in here. That will give me 10 values in the one direction. Let's think about the other thing we want to change. If, for example, I wanted to go through and change the twist, okay, then I would go through and give myself a range there, too. So if, for example, for my code block, I wanted to change the twist, go from 10 to, oh, like 60 values of 10. I'm just going to go through and put the twist in there. We'll go through and change this in just a second. Okay, sort of understand what I'm up to? <coughs> so here's the deal. I got all of these different values of the building height, 10 to 200. I got all these different values of the twist, 10 to 60. Or, and what I would like to do is now kind of come up with combinations of them. So I'd like to say 110, 120, 130, 140, and so on. Okay, so you can imagine there's some space that includes all those different values. And it's kind of interesting. Uh, one of the students in the last quarter's class found the object of my desire for going through and doing that. What you really want to do is kind of like a cross plot of these two different sets of values. <coughs> what it's called in Dynamo's terminology, there's something called a Cartesian product. So let's see if I can find it. List Cartesian product. Oh, and I think, let me think about what I have to do here. I think what I'm going to do is basically take one list and the second list. I need something called a combinator, and I have to remember what it was. I think it's list join. It might be... Let's 
something a little bit different. I am pretty sure we're just joining one list to another list. Might actually just be list create. I think that would actually work for us too. But let's just try this. What I'm trying to basically get out of this is basically like all the different combinations of those two different things. So 110, 120, 130, 110, 10, 120. So just trying to get the combinations of those things. So let me try this. Now, even just because I'm doing a little testing here, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I'm just going to disconnect the f of x right now, just so uh, I'm kind of really just doing my focused testing on this little area. So let's see what we got going on here. Okay, it didn't do what I want to do. Let's run started. I have anything going on over here. I think over here I still have modify face selected, so that was holding it back. So here's what I actually had in mind. It actually did the right thing there. I got a bunch of lists. I have a list which has a bunch of little sublists there. So this little list Cartesian product actually did a pretty good job for me in terms of taking the hundreds and pairing them up with all different values over there. And you get down to the 140s and all the pairs. You notice this is actually you know, quite a extensive list in here. Now, this is really subdivided so all the hundreds in the first list are combined with all, are in one sublist. All the 110s are in a sublist. What I want to do is just to make all these pairs perfectly even, you just flatten it by one. And that way it'll uh, all be kind of equally valued in terms of what's going on. So I can go the over popular list flatten. should hopefully get kind of a nice flat list. So you'll see that there's a lot of values in here. I got 65 different values to go through and check. Okay, this is really getting to the essence of the argument about why list maps get to be pretty rough in that for just a few different things we're already up to 65. You can imagine we're getting up to thousands and tens of thousands if we have a lot of different variables in there. So all this little piece over here with my little list join, my list Cartesian product, and right in here, my list flatten, all the way down in here. This is really all about just creating the different combinations. Now, this list of values here, as opposed to just the tens and twenties, okay, that really includes all the flatten stuff. Okay, that's really what I want to feed into the function now. So let me do a little bit of adjustment here. I'm going to take these guys, put them all together here. I'm going to add that all to the same group. Hey, you're supposed to be able to add to it. Add to group. Because that really is set up the list of input, I'll call it pairs. And what we're ultimately going to do is send that in as the list of pairs. So actually, we're not doing too awfully bad. Let's just kind of pause there for a second. Does anyone want me to save this up? Or is that, are you pretty good in terms of uh, kind of really what I have is now? Well, that should probably be part of it, too. Okay, so again, I'm combining them using a join operation, then flattening it. That kind of makes sense? 
Or do we need, we need to save that up for anyone to like, uh, save it up? Okay. No harm in saving it out. Okay, so let me go through and you have the other function there. Let me save this as. I'll make this my uh, foray. I'll say the pairs are created. Come back over to the nearby canvas site and send them up there. So that should be out there for you now, too. So here's what we want to do. We want to go through and send pairs of values back into this function here, as opposed to a single value. Now, I got my report parameters. They're doing kind of OK. I have my whole idea of my test parameter name, although now I have like a test parameter 1 and a test parameter 2. So I want to sort of put that as another input, and then test value is going to become test values. So I'm going to do two different things to my function right now. I'm going to change it so as opposed to reading a single value, it's going to get a pair of values and operate on that. And then beyond that, just for test parameter name, I'm going to feed in two different values there as opposed to a single one. So they can both be evaluated or inputted. So I'm going to go back into that same custom node. This one custom node has become very popular, or it's getting very valuable. Okay, for test value, I'm going to make that test value pairs, and here's the deal. This is the critical step in this whole little operation. What you got to do is, as opposed to it being a var, it's not a var, it's a list of vars. So this is the part where for this declaration to get it to work right, we have to give it that notation that basically says, hey, you basically have a list of values coming in as opposed to a single value coming in. Otherwise, it takes it and it kind of makes sense of it, but it doesn't really do anything very sensible with it. It kind of gets confused about how to interpret it. So test value pairs is really what we want to do. Okay. Are those straight brackets, not that straight brackets? Yes. Can you upload that node because it didn't upload that one? Oh, there's no last time? It was in the 15.1, the bigger one. It didn't. Oh, it didn't? Oh, maybe I saved it or something like that. OK, I'll put it all out there. Let me finish doing this last change, and I'll put it all back into a cohesive thing. OK, so we did that. Test value pairs, that should be fine. Now for the test parameter name, we're passing that on there. I'm going to just change the, so that's going to be test parameter 1, because that's the first value that I want to set. But what I need to do is actually go through and set another one. I'll say test parameter 2, because one's going to be like the uh, building height, the other one's going to be the twist. And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to go through and do another set parameter by name, because what I want to do is take, oops, not there. I want to get you and say, after you go through and set that parameter, let's go through and take that very same element and set the second parameter name. A very good question. So the question on the floor is, I've got these test pairs right over there, but here's what I want to do. I want to take the first value in that list and send it over as the parameter to set over here. I want to take the second one and send it over there. Okay, so this is one of those ones where you can do it a couple different ways. Let me pop those down right over here. 
if I want to take a list and break it into subsets, okay, I can either say list and say get item at index zero and get item at index one, and then kind of feed those values. I can take that and say list get item at index. So one way is like this. I can say get item at index. Take that list and say, great, at index zero, you are the first value. And then do a second one and say at index one, you're the second value. But for people who like code blocks, let me kind of show you another way to do that because it's actually a way that I think is a little bit easier in the long run. You can say input pair And if you just put in bracket zero, that's the first item in the list. I can say input value pair item one. Okay, and that'll basically do the same thing. I'm gonna take that, and I'll take item zero. I'm gonna take item one right there. So this this code block right here is essentially the same as get item at index zero and get item at, in, in, item at index one. Okay. So for every input, I go through, I take the pairs, I break the pair into one and zero, I pop them in over here. In my transaction start end, I still, I want to input the element, set the first value to the first parameter name, set the second value or parameter to the second value, then transaction it and pull it on down. So to kind of make sense how this is building, okay, then let me go ahead and save that. Over here, we're going to have test parameter one and test parameter two. So in terms of what this is going to look like, Test parameter one is building height. Test parameter two is twist. I wish they all sort of didn't do what they do in terms of like juggling around in terms of the order, but they do. And now the list is going to be, that's the f of x. Let me that out of there for now because that's not doing us any good. So let's just see if we can follow the logic. So, test parameter one, the name is building height. Test parameter two, the name is <coughs> test value pairs are going to be read by the list map for these pairs of values that came out of the common data. Okay, then the reporting values are all passing in. So this theoretically is a very generic way of doing it now. So let's go ahead and I save that one. I'm going to save this one. that for Okay, so that should be replacing the other one. I should change the name because it actually now is the list map with multiple input values. So now we have probably the most generic case. We have multiple input values and multiple output values. And 
he, besides the fact that we're using a list map, which is a little less than efficient to go through and do this because it's going to evaluate all 100 and some odd cases or 60 some odd cases, you know, it's actually going to be a very effective way of doing that. So let's go ahead and I'll do that. So let's just try running this and see if we can actually come up with uh, any happiness. Okay, so that's pulling on down there. I think we ought to be okay. Shall we give it a run? It's going to be 65 values. Again, don't worry about the fact that my Excel file isn't working because that's just me and my Excel license. But let's see if we can get this to work. I will say run. Okay, so you can sort of see for every height it's running through the range of twist values. that we don't need to. Oh, what's going on over here? Oops. Let's get some a little messed up over here because what's happening is the values are all reading properly. That's okay. The In terms of the input value, it's now a pair. So that's why it's showing up as a pair. If I wanted to go through and have that flatten out, I can do that so that, uh, you know, when I join them all together, oh, read better a little bit for Excel, but it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's going through and for every pair of values, it's going through and reporting those out. So see if you can run that on your side. And we'll report back and we'll think about the next step about where this is all going. Say what? It's a little tricky in terms of, again, let's go back to what we did have to do. We had to go through and in our function, we had to sort of have two different inputs to kind of have the names. And then back over here, we have to have two different sets. Okay, all within the transaction start and end. Let me get rid of that just because it's not doing us any good. So I'm basically getting the values, I'm unpacking the values, that's the way I would describe what's happening right there. Then I'm setting the function, that's what's happening in the pink over here. So I think of that as being all together. That's just kind of unpacking the values. And then down here I'm just doing all my reporting, so that part stayed the same. Oh, man, you, can you go to the edit, the, the custom node? Sure. So what do I feed into the list map? I have to feed in the, the list map with both values now, right? Oh, um, at the t wait, at, at the tail end? Oh, in terms of, oh, well, no, for the set parameter name, are you talking about this node? Where we, we have the pairs, and then we break the pairs down and set them both over there. The list map's on the outside. Oh, yeah, that's right. On the list map, it's really, yeah, we're feeding the pairs in as opposed to the single value. So, kind of making sense? No worries, okay. We won't push it much further today, but let me kind of talk about where it is going next just so you get a sense of where it's going. What's gonna happen here, you will notice as we go marching along over here in our little baby example over here, it's not doing too awfully bad, but it's really returning a lot of data values. If I went scrolling all the way down this list, what are those, 65 values or something like that, there's a lot of values. So for this little two variable problem, this is not so bad, but if you can imagine this is gonna to get to be a little uh, cumbersome, especially if we start having three different things we're trying to change. And the idea is rather than just sort of searching exhaustively, what tends to happen is you'll run into different conditions where you just wanna stop searching. For example, 
for this tower as we're moving up and we're twisting it. Yeah. As soon as we get sort of more gross floor area, then you're allowed to build on the site because of the floor area ratio. We might as well stop for that iteration. There's no reason to go further down that. So whether it's the overall strategy or even for a specific height as you're twisting it, as soon as you exceed some value that's no longer acceptable, you might as well just stop, okay, and no longer keep on evaluating further. And what that does is just prunes the search space, makes it much smaller so that as soon as you are getting the invalid kind of boundary conditions or exceeding the boundary condition, you just don't keep on going any further for the search. So to do that, the way we approach that is something called a while loop. And a while loop is actually pretty straightforward. The while loop works like this. Basically, you set up a custom node, kind of like what we've been doing. But what you do is you keep on looping while the condition is true. And as soon as the condition is no longer true, it fails. The only thing you have to watch out for the while loop is it doesn't fail until the issue gets false. OK, the condition gets false. So what you always have to do is you work, 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 work till you get to fail. And you say, uh oh, I went too far. Let me back up one. OK, so we won't work through it today. Let me just kind of open it so you can take a look if you want to look ahead. If I go to Revit. There we go. There it is. And I say, let's go ahead and open. I'll say no. It's actually 15.3. We sort of did all of 15.2 as we were just building it organically. Let's go through looping while we can set the element to the target value. Let me do it this one. I'll just come to here and kind of give you an overview of how it all basically works. It starts with the idea, we still have this idea of a testing parameter. We have something like the height. We're going to have a test value for the height. Now we're going to increment the height like a number of different kind of values. But rather than doing it as a code block, here I'm going to start with 10 and kind of keep on going up by 2 on the height. What I'm going to do is use this little test parameter to keep on checking it. But here is how it basically works. We're at every different instance going to go through and compute what the result is. Okay? But then ultimately, we're going to use this loop while function to go through and say the result of this is the result greater than or less than or equal to some target value. And the target value will be something like this. The target value in this case is just a target for the gross volume. So it's going to go through and report values. But one of the things it's going to check is, how are we doing relative to that? And based upon that, whether we are less than or equal or not, we're going to go through another loop or not. And as soon as it fails, what we're going to do is say, hey, OK, we failed. We're going to take the failing test value, basically back off one test value, because we always went one further. We just exceeded the boundary, and then set the result Okay, using whatever that test value was. So this is kind of what we're talking about right before you get on the starting class today, that it's actually the same function. He says, here we're actually plugging it to the value as opposed to using a map or a loop or something to it. And then here we're using it to actually sort of cast it to the final value, which is the result that we want. Okay, super. So we'll go ahead and play with this next time, as well as talking about what we're going to do for our final uh, assignment. Okay, so come on back on Thursday and the fun will continue.